This episode is brought to you by the Italian restaurant Buca da Beppado. Buca di di Beppido di Buca di Beppido. Bacoon and Bep 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 Bep. Hey, welcome back to Sonic Weekly. Uh, my name is Grant and we've got Bo. Hi, Bo. Hey, that was not Cash Cash at all. <laughs> that was not Cash Cash. Bo's new character is a guy who's only ever heard Cash Cash being like, I think that I think that's Cash Cash. I would unironically love a re- Cash Cash remix of Soliana New City. Ooh, yes. In fact, if you are listening and you have access to Cash Cash, our Cash Cash, or our neighbors with Cash Cash, we would like to make that happen. Uh, but that's uh, not legally binding yet. But I'll tell you what is legally binding. Our relationship with the star of the show, <laughs> out of the shadows, into the spotlight, ah. David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Hello. Yes, that's right. We are in a for, for, formidable? No, I was going to say formal, a formal contract, but formidable too, because it's ironclad and it's really painful. Yes. That's right. Uh, feeling good. You mentioned uh, Buka, Buka de... How do you say that again? Buka de Beppo. Buka de Buka Beppo. Buka de Beppo. Right. Did you know that if you type that into Google Translate for the longest time, it would translate as Beepole, uh, which is, of course, a fantastic place to eat. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, oh. yeah, Beepole. I don't know if it still does that. They might have fixed it by now, but um, I've never eaten there. I don't think I've ever been in one. Well, yeah, if I haven't eaten there, I haven't been in one. I don't normally go into restaurants and not eat. Grant, oh, yeah. you're, not, are we you're, you're not doing that, just regularly strolling into an Applebee's, taking a whiff and being like, not for me. <laughs> when Cash Cash isn't playing here, I'm gone. <laughs> that, that's true. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are people who go into an Applebee's and maybe just drink. Sure. Uh, do you know anybody who's like, I only drink at Applebee's? Uh, I grew up in bar. the Midwest, David. I know a lot of alcoholics. <laughs> yes, yes. We went to school together. We graduated in 2004. I only smoke when I drink, and I only drink at Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, I live in the Applebee's. Uh, it's a duplex wow. Applebee's and home. That's where we're all headed. That would be so cool to live above an Applebee's. <laughs> I don't know why it would be cool, but it just seems when cool you're there, your family. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like feeling like it's kind of like urban and cool, but it's not. It's in a parking lot and you're smelling the fumes of dead chicken. Right. I know this is a podcast about Sega, but like, okay, yeah. Applebee's, if you hang <laughs> a picture at an angle, it doesn't make it atmosphere. Oh. It's just a picture at an angle. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Right. We're recording this in an Applebee's right now, uh, but we are enviously eyeing the Buca de Beppo across the street. Uh, <laughs> but with us is our friend uh, making his third appearance on the show. Uh, we're very happy to have Keith Stack back. Hey. Keith Stack is back. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I'm back. Hello. That's right. You better believe it. <laughs> uh, Keith is here to pick up the check. We didn't tell him ahead of time, <laughs> but <laughs> it's my role. One by one, all of the hosts are going to like just sort of. I'm going to go to the bathroom and then never come back. <laughs> Keith is at the end like, I was a guest on this show. Why am I wrapping this up? Am I editing it now? Posting it? What am I doing? Oh, It's okay because I've got all the cash cash. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because you're the one's friends with... Are you... Ge- Wait, where, where do cash cash live? Who's geographically the closest? I'm assuming... Is cash cash a person? Is it multiple it's, people? It's two. It, two guys. It's two, it's people. two people. Oh, but yeah. let's before we dox cash cash. Two caches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could dox it if it's on their Spotify about page. But it probably isn't. I get but it's not like Cash Cash who reside in both Pacoma and Tacoma. I don't know if those are both places. They uh, might have a couple different houses, right? They might have like a, an apartment in Jersey. Uh, but they live. Yeah. They live in Beverly Hills. Oh, that's a that's an interesting arrangement. It actually okay. So fact check. Mm-hmm. Cash Cash is three guys, and they're East Coast. They're all East Coast. Oh, so Keith, right, Keith. So I am. You are the like the you closest. are the closest. Yeah. To to Cash's Cash. I'll 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 find them. I'll hunt them down. <laughs> you can ask them why they don't do Sonic anymore. Yeah, they were pretty. They were on fire when it came to Sonic for a while. They did colors, they were involved in generations, and then they vanished. They were also, I believe, um, weren't they at Sonic Boom 2012 as well? Like, jamming? You would know more than I would. Uh, I wasn't there. Which would make a good behind the music. Oh, yeah. Where did they go? 
Yeah. Like sliding into pills and booze at the Sonic Boom Con. <laughs> That's the behind the music arc, right? Uh, they kept telling us, gotta go fast. That's when we discovered speed. And <laughs> it was all it was all downhill from there. But when we yeah, hit the rolled. slope, we were <laughs> <laughs> we found all the rings in the sky. They were buttholes. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're off to a weird start, Keith. Um, hey, it's a weird. It's a weird week. You yeah. know, we we do the show weird, every week. Weird world we live in this week. It's a weird world. It's and a sick, sad world is what it is. It's a pretty <laughs> bad world, and it's it's in the future. Archaeologists will look at this podcast, but not the way that we intend it. They'll just be like, "This is this is what." at a time of like the climate and this and that, but they're just talking about Sonic. This is, they were inviting their own doom. So to our grandchildren, thank you so much again for listening. You are our intended audience. <laughs> I have in my skull, the location of a hidden treasure. If you're able to find the hidden golden skull, Whoa. you can find the hidden treasure of the original, not reissued, not the not for resale Sonic the Hedgehog 1991 cartridge which has got to be worth a pretty penny in the year 2030. <laughs> Wait, isn't it crazy that with retro game prices going crazy, the Sonic games on the Genesis are still dirt cheap, like on eBay? Is it is it supply and demand where they're just like a ton of pack ends out there? Yeah, but like... And then also like they're re-released so often, perhaps? Maybe. Right. But like, you know, you, you look up like uh, Mario games, they tend to kind of go for a bit more. Right. Or like... Any like Mega big Man. Nintendo game. Yeah, Mega Man game. I should have hung on to that uh, Mario Duck Hunt cart I had. Oh, yeah. I mean, it used to be like 60 cents at Funko Land <laughs> or even cheaper than that, maybe. I forget the exact price, but it was like 39 cents. I'm like, wow, you could buy so many. You could build a house with them. And then somebody tries to sell it for $100,000 and you're like, no, you're lying. It's probably one of those things, right, where the collector market for video games will eventually it'll pop it'll bust it'll explode whatever adjective you want to use there's so many and then there'll just be a handful of games that are expensive and rare you know like comics you know there there was a big old bubble uh 10 copies of of superman 75 death of superman hoping hey this will pay for my kids college fund and you know what it did it didn't do that it it paid for uh nothing oh, probably, yeah. we talk probably a nice hot app at applebee's oh yeah it, would, it definitely <laughs> would call cover a couple apps, uh, right? The the uh, mozzarella sticks, perhaps, or the. I've been um, getting into retro game collecting. I think I've met, you know, I've mentioned on the last couple of episodes that mm -hmm. I've been getting into the GameCube. So I've been having the time of my life overspending on games that were in the bargain bin, you know, twenty years ago, like Sonic Riders, uh, which I paid, you know, close to. I don't know what it sold for. Was it a forty dollar game? Was, I hope it was because that was around. It was what probably I spent. a fifty dollar game. Okay, right? all right, maybe I got a good deal on Sonic Riders. Uh, but I, but a lot of the other games I've been paying like essentially full game prices, and I've been noticing as well as with the markups of like you know there's some games that are just like off limits now. I mean you could play a ROM of it, but it's not really the same. Like Conker's Bad Fur Day was like three hundred dollars at this store that I went to. Wow. Skies of Arcadia for Dreamcast, which I have on Dreamcast. Was similarly around two fifty three hundred at the same store, and I was like, "Wow, that's weird." I'm never going to sell mine. You'll pry it from my cold, dead hands. Grandchildren never finished that game, but still, never going to sell it. Never going to part with your, it. Your grandkids will sell it, though. Yeah, that's the treasure. Yeah, they'll be listening to this while they've put it up on eBay, and uh, yes, or probably heritage auctions. They probably got it graded, sealed up in plastic, so nobody can actually play it. Yeah. That's okay because they'll find out that it was uh, it got bit rotted anyway at that point. So, <laughs> what are we? What is going on? What is going on in the world right now? What are we talking about? We're talking about hey, video games. Should we talk about the news for a second, and then we can go back to whatever the hell? <laughs> we should, yes, yes. Um, right. I was going to be like, hey, let's tie this into Sega as a whole, and and try to do a segue about swagmen but this article <laughs> actually it has nothing to do with the saturn era at all because jack specific oh they they have oh there goes grant yeah he froze a little bit ago he did fright right he was so quiet oh oh there he is oh you're back <laughs> the amount of time that took was because i was like no the three of them are frozen not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think that right that, that's probably part of the thing where um your internet is actually being auctioned off and you didn't know that yeah yeah that's true 
What what do you think is is the one thing that you own that your grandkids would actually want to sell and could make money off of? Okay, I'm going to answer this. My my grandfather, he had this this cabinet that hung on the wall and it had huh? a portrait painted on it of Sherlock Holmes. Ooh. You know, deer stalker smoking a pipe. And you know what was inside the cabinet? It was pipe supplies for smoking tobacco and a pipe. That's kind of neat. And that thing was super cool. And uh, I wanted it. And one of my goddamn cousins got it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, 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 man. You, you should steal it back. Yeah, this should be the plot of the third Knives Out. <laughs> <laughs> actually, what I wanted was like a nice picture of it. I don't actually want, you know thing in my house i don't smoke pipe oh i mean i don't you, think any of my cousins do either no the, who yeah you, you don't need it because you want to smoke you you have it because it's it's sherlock holmes and it gives you the air of sophistication and also it's a pipe cabinet so you don't have to worry about all the cocaine that <laughs> sherlock holmes also did because he probably uh, yes, seven percent solution the seven percent right and, you know sherlock holmes all of it, like all of the original stuff, is in the public domain, and it has been for a couple of years now. Finally, so you you could do do whatever you want with that. We could make the third knives out about that. Well, you know what you could buy that your grandkids will sell for a, a, an appetizer at Applebee's. Jack Pacific apparently has a license for other Sega properties, none of them from the Saturn, which means there is no segue to Bo for this this news piece. <laughs> Remember Axel from Streets of Rage and and the werewolf from Altered Beast? You know, Altered Beast, the game that you had before Sonic that wasn't a very good port. Yeah, you you can get those action figures now. People like Altered Beast. I'm being a little rude to it. Are we just moving past the thing of like what what thing your your grandchildren? Is that when my internet froze? <laughs> yeah, I threw that out there. Bo told the story. Gonna buy, and I'm... You're going to buy Axel and then your grandchildren are going to want that. That's oh, OK. You know, I, OK. Right. I, well, I'm curious for I'm just curious for Keith. Oh, yeah. For Keith to answer. Oh, uh, uh, I bought one of those uh, a Mario 3D all star games that they physically. Stopped. Yeah, yeah, physically. Yeah, I yeah. figure I'll just never open it up. Oh yeah, a few decades, and I'll pay for everything. I have um some pretty ugly early Mario and Sonic merch. Ooh. Do you think they'd be interested in that, David? Do you think they'll be interested in this ugly, useless garbage that I have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they might, depending on the the qual the condition it's in. Bad. Oh, used. Used like looking dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Hev- heavily dragged through parks and uh other childlike calvin and Hobbes type adventures okay do you have the uh the little sonic that goes on a little was it a motorcycle and he's holding a ring in each hand oh man the ring i had that i don't you know i might have uh, you know at my mom's house because i definitely did have that because we've talked about before on this show too that like mm-hmm. Uh, we came of age in the 90s. There was no Sonic toys. It was very hard to live. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and that was definitely like that was a pretty good one. You know, when you compare it to like the one, the gumdrop one and the McDonald's fire butt one, <laughs> that one at least kind of, like the one problem with the motorcycle one is like his head is a perfect circle. It's the band of perfect circle. Remember them? His hand, is, his head is just circle, and his spikes are so so backwards that he doesn't actually have like a sonic shape. Is a weird bullet shape, or like a tooth shape. He looks like a tooth. It's perfect circle. Are they, how do they relate to Cash Cash? <laughs> I think they. Um, yeah, probably there will be a Cash Cash remix of a Perfect Circle Sonic song because a Perfect Circle will probably they'll probably take somebody from a Perfect Circle to do like the vocal track and you know Frontiers too. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, right. Um, I, I might, I might own something that's expensive or not expensive. I'm actually not sure if anything I own would. Uh, You're not especially going to it, or else somebody's going to break in and steal it. I, that's true. I can't let anyone know what I've got. Um, so instead, we're going to say ding, ding, ding. Breaking news. <laughs> we're moving on from whatever we were talking about before. Fair enough. Everyone here is excited for Sonic the Hedgehog three. And even the the crew, they're excited because, hey, filming finally wrapped. They get to go home and go to bed, which is great for them, because I'm assuming they've just been on set awake this whole time and haven't slept. Uh, Jeff Fowler posted and we are wrapped. And there's a a picture of the clapboard with some drawings 
drawings of Sonic and Shadow uh, and Knuckles and Tails. Whoa, that's the cast. Spoiler. And uh, and then and Tyson quote tweeted it. What an absolutely dreamlike experience this movie has been so far. Can't wait for the world to see. Makes it sound like it might be good. I don't know. Dreamlike is subject to interpretation. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Not all my dreams have been great. Oh, right. It's not a proper clapboard. It's huge. So <laughs> I wasn't really looking at it. <laughs> Wait, is it a novelty clapboard? It's not a real. I mean, are do they make novelty clapboard? It's pretty large. Somebody did, or they maybe they just have like a giant director's assistant. Oh, that, that's just looks, that could looks be. Normal to have. Yeah. It's like when you see a photo of the world's tallest man mm-hmm. and the world's smallest woman together, and it's like yeah. this, you know, his shoe, and her, you know, that photo. Yeah, they were married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can picture it. <laughs> yes and uh there's other sonic news that we uh, i wonder what sonic news will come out this week right after we finish recording because that seems to <laughs> right after we finished recording last week the sonic toy party with basically the same logo as toy story but with sonic <laughs> right was leaked by the sonic show which is the youtube channel with the animated cartoon raccoon uh host right. oh yeah that guy is it a cartoon raccoon or is it just photos of a raccoon it is photos of a raccoon with let's say cartoon eyebrows okay i yeah okay <laughs> you know there's there's a degree of animation sure keith is an animator and an artist uh you know <laughs> that I, is if, true if you're it, i would say it's mixed media yeah it's still a cartoon do you think it's how would it's, how should i have described it i would just call him a raccoon <laughs> okay, you think that's what ra- like real raccoons are like? Uh, pretty much. Right. Just about. Shuffling through the trash, and that's where they found the footage. The <laughs> Sonic Toys Party. Ah, zing, got him. Zing, zing, bazinga. I don't know who I got. Okay, it's, it's, it's supposed to have 32 characters, right? And then the thing I saw, it was just all the same four characters or five or something like that. Yeah, it's unclear if it's like, is it really a different character or is it just Sonic wearing a hat? Yeah. And does that count as a different character? Unclear. Because, yeah, it was just Shadow. So I think if you're going to have 32 at a time, you got to, like, right. yeah, break out. got to break out Luffy Man. Yeah. So what is this game for people who haven't seen the uh, leaked footage? If you're familiar with the game Fall Guys, it's, uh, it's a similar competitive online, maybe free-to-play. We don't know. No. Uh, but it's little courses, and then more people get eliminated. There's one winner in the end. I guess that's fun. How does it relate to Fortnite? This is like revealing my depth of understanding of modern games. So. Yeah. Fortnite's fun, and this looks questionable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess to be fair, the, the Sega, like the Persona leaker, uh, were their na- is their name Midori? I, I can forget now. They did go on record before they retired from leaking forever that uh yeah this this was a build from last year that it's moved on since somebody also posted a, a random screenshot from a different trailer which also included characters like Zavik. Oh. everyone loves Zavik. um so i guess trying to make Zavik happen. They, they really want to they've been trying for a decade and it's never going to happen um there's got to be one kid out there one kid yeah yeah there's one big Zavik <laughs> super fan and this is this next joke is for you, Zavik super fan. Hey, did you hear they're uh, they're gonna make a, a Sonic Heroes remake? Supposedly, this is a rumor with no basis in like anything that we can point to as like a fact. It's just somebody saying something. But they want to make it mm-hmm. in Havoc, and so they they're gonna bring in Zavik <laughs> in Havoc. That's a that's a good joke. I like and it. actually, I think that's wrong because it's Unreal. It's the Unreal yeah. Engine that they're yeah uh, Unreal Engine five. Uh, right, basically. Uh, there were rumors about it. Uh, I, I think every uh, Zippo went, "Hey, it's happening." Then Sonic Stadium went, "No, it's not." And then the the Midori person also went, "Hey, they're considering it." So it went back and forth all over the place, which basically tells me maybe it's happening, maybe it's not. Great Schrodinger Sonic game. Yeah. That's how all the rumors. <laughs> Speaking of Zippo, this son of a bitch. Uh, now he's playing with this heartstring of saying that Fantasy Star Online is coming back. David, right? What am I supposed to do with that? Did Fantasy Star Online ever really go away? 
It, it never really went away. No, I guess that's GSO true. two has been hanging out forever. New Genesis, yeah, but dragging people in. Yeah, is it like oh the original is coming back? I guess is that what it's meant to be? I was never a, a PSO head. Uh, is that what they what they're called? <laughs> yes. Well. <laughs> It's a reimagining reboot, but yes, I'm curious if who our PSO heads are here, and Keith. I I am not a PSO head, uh, <laughs> shamefully. Okay. Wow. I definitely was. Oh. I feel like that. Oh. Dial up experience of you know, meeting up with your forum friends and taking on dark fouls. Yeah. Oh. Fighting some some rappies. That's right. Right. What was your What was your class? What was the class? You... Uh, I guess hunter, but I just remade characters from Burning Rangers on PSO. <laughs> oh, even back then? Yeah, of, of course. Yeah. Wow. The two games share like quite a bit of staff like of among Sonic Team projects, like most of the Burning Rangers people next worked on PSO. Bo, you 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 I guess for some reason I thought the Burning Rangers thing was like a newer fixation. But you were obsessed with Burning Rangers back then too? Kind of a re- revealed preference, yeah. I guess I liked it quite I a bit in that you have to play it for hundreds of repeats to save all the characters in it, and I did that. I'm not <laughs> obsessed, but looking back, maybe maybe a little bit obsessed. Yeah, determined. You know, we we can find a different persistent. Well, yeah, persistent. There you go. If you own a thesaurus, email Sonic Weekly Podcast <laughs> at gmail dot com. <laughs> But Fantasy Star Online, I, I don't know if, how it holds up in light of modern MMOs. Like, I haven't played any of them, so it's as good as they get for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was like a blast. You, you know, the thing I really enjoyed about it was they wouldn't let you like actually like, type to each other. So you had like these symbols you could communicate with. You could type to each other if you had the Sega Dreamcast keyboard. Well, I did get the keyboard, uh, but then they would like also censor you and like really... Uh, draconian way so you couldn't say saturday because like a substring of saturday is turd <laughs> they, they want that on there. So you gotta spell the whole thing saturn day they want you they wanted to push the saturn it's fine push the saturn off a cliff oh <laughs> well we, we gotta say this about zippo who has been part of all of these rumors which is i think he was also saying well whatever i don't want to get it every, every zippo conversation is like the same thing of like well he said all this stuff, which is provably untrue, like he was like, oh, there's a Nintendo Direct coming in January, and then that hasn't happened. And uh, and then there's the other argument, which is like, yeah, you know, he, he gets one out of ten things half right, and that's you got to be looking for that needle in the haystack with him. Do you have to do like a little bit of Nostradamus, like, oh, when he said this, this was an allusion to uh, <laughs> 9-11. Right, yeah. They're all, it all kind of comes back to uh, tragedy. Speaking of tragedy, David, uh, what else is in the Sonic news? <laughs> oh, I think there was. A... Is, is there something tragic? Uh, we're talking about the hero. Oh, are, oh, yeah, are we talk about these layoffs. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could talk about that. I actually had no follow up. I, I, I was like, <laughs> surely anything. can. All right. Well, you've been in this slot playing some heroes, Grant. I mean, are you excited at the prospect of it being remade or do you think it's a waste of time? I, I it would be it kind of makes sense as one of the ones to remake because it is the game with Mm -hmm. the most playable characters so if you want to reintroduce those characters as more than just like weird missions in sonic generations and you know assorted background figures in sonic forces then maybe it does make some sense and also i feel that there's a lot of room to improve with it whereas with sonic adventure and sonic adventure 2 i kind of have been pretty consistently against the idea of a full remake, more of just wanting like a proper, like a Sonic Origins treatment for it. Like just put it in HD, you know, fix some of the bugs and controls, but largely bring the vision to HDMI cables, man. I still haven't finished Heroes though. You know, I I, I finished Team Sonic at, you know, I've talked about this a couple of times in the last couple episodes and then i've just sort of moved on i I got other gamecube games that are not necessarily better most of them look worse sonic heroes is a pretty good looking game uh it's it's very crisp uh Mm -hmm. with the progressive mode and um but you know it's pretty tedious and you know azuka san nearly died making it famously infamously put himself in the hospital lost 20 pounds maybe i need to make Sonic Heroes. I could stand to lose 20 pounds. Hey, come on, folks. <clears throat> do, you, do you think Azuka wants to remake it so somebody else could almost die? <laughs> and you could just watch yeah. from the sidelines. Write a passage. 
Yeah. Every 10 years or so, somebody needs to almost die from Sonic. Yeah. Gosh. Like the Chris and Christina almost died from Extreme. Uh, Azuka almost died from Heroes. Big Red Button. Uh, I think their company almost died from, <laughs> from Sonic Boom. Would you be willing to die for Sonic? How close to death <laughs> would you be willing to let? Under what circumstances? I guess it would be you directing the Sonic Heroes remake, right? Yeah, I guess. It'd be so. like you sleep, you'd sleep in the office yeah. and you'd be like, we've got to get this right. Uh, right. I would, I would want to rewrite the whole story. I would make it uh, stronger and the connective tissue between two and, and Shadow. I'd emphasize that. Give some pathos to Shadow existing and not being dead. And, uh, and doing that, struggling, feeling the pain, feeling the tears. Yeah, right to the brink of death. And then I'd pull myself back. And yeah. And then I could tell the story 20 years from now. And it, it would be great. Yeah. So let's let's do that. I, I like the story even now, too. I, I find it admirable. <laughs> so I, I Maybe that's how easily conned I am. You're just telling me st- <laughs> an imaginary story mm-hmm. of how you could be very you know, self-sacrificial and work really hard. And I'm like, wow, what a what a man. Right. Look at that. Look at that imaginary willpower he has. Oh man, it'd be so great. I could go on the Yukon Trail. It'll be Yeah. Gonna survive. What a, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The news what well, you know, what the news. Right. It it's been a strange week of like, here's some stuff that's been leaked, here's some stuff that maybe hasn't been leaked. It is just a lot of rumors. I mean, aside from Sonic 3 being done, and even then it's like, well, we haven't seen a trailer yet. I don't think we've seen a lot of behind the scenes like yeah. photos either. We saw the new Knuckles poster. I guess there's. Oh, that. yeah, that, that came out today. They're really, which... they're really uh, going with the hat. Yeah, it's a good choice. Honestly. You know what we were talking about a year ago on this very date? It was published. Ooh, it, we were talking about the DLC that was coming to Sonic Origins and the first wave of DLC to Sonic Frontiers. That was one year ago. This was not yet the birthday bash. This was the Easter one. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. The Easter cocoa, the springtime cocoa, right? And and that's when we got Action Chain Challenge. I think. Whoa. No, 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 no. That was two. That was update two. This was the music notes. This was. This was the music notes. Yeah. This was the jukebox. You're absolutely right. That was a year ago. Wow. In that time, David has fathered. (laughs) So many good ideas in this, and you can listen to them in each episode. Didn't know where that was going to land. Right. Yeah, sometimes I start a sentence and I just don't know where it's going to go. And that's part of the fun of talking. Well, if somebody could go through every episode, write down every good idea I've had, and then email it in so that I can remember what they were. SonicWeeklyPodcast at (laughs) gmail.com. Yes. That's right. Hey, hey, speaking of Easter, has anybody here bought any of the Sonic Easter toys, which apparently are at Target? What what are they? Give me me the list. What makes them Easter? Uh, There's a... All right, there's an Easter Sonic, there's an Easter Knuckles, an Easter Eggman, an Easter Amy. So you got the Easter Tails, and then uh, Pocky with a, with an Easter basket. Pocky makes sense. That makes sense. But w- what makes the characters Easter? Oh, they got uh, they're colored differently. Oh, like like an Easter egg? Yeah, they're kind of like, like more pastel. Knuckles is pinker, and Eggman's wearing a slightly different colored uh, jumpsuit pastel colors they are yeah soft pastel. purple pinks blues as yeah, sonic gotcha, scott gotcha. so they didn't put like easter egg patterns on eggman there's not like polka dots yeah that's I a mean, great eggman idea. sort of has a, an easter egg design on it i I'd, I'd say does he yeah let, let me see if i can uh eggman with an easter egg design does work actually it's just like i'm using google and, and google takes me yeah. to shopping and i'm like thanks this works oh yeah okay yeah he's got like the um charlie brown uh pattern across a pink bodysuit he kind of you know yeah okay i was gonna give an opinion and then i'm just not gonna say anything right <laughs> i'm just gonna observe it here's an ebay listing somebody's selling all six for um 76 dollars which seems like a bit too much uh the the listeners can't see it but it is it, it's for the purpose of us here so we can react look at knuckles he's pink look at sonic and tails they have bunny ears yeah tails is wearing a green shirt yeah i don't know they look neat tails is cute yeah amy's cute eggman's pretty cute i mean sonic's pretty good cool. they're fun they're pretty fun mm-hmm. um six figures 76 dollars act now ebay.com or target as you mentioned 
Right. I think Target is probably the easier place to go. But on eBay, it says you can get a two year protection plan from Allstate <laughs> with it for only $10 more. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. Keith, tell me one of your most cherished Easter memories, assuming oh, you've ever celebrated Easter. <laughs> uh, I mean, I none jump out at, at the top, off the top of my head. I mean, oh. they're all pretty, pretty uh, cherished. <laughs> I mean, I like candy. Okay. I would always get, uh, you know, a basket with candy. And personally, if I ever got like a basket with Sonic toys in it, that would have been like yeah. the greatest Easter ever. Yeah. Uh, so I, I get why they made these. Like, imagine sticking one of these in an Easter basket. That's handing it to a small child. Imagine if they had to like go find it. Imagine if they had to find it. And there's just the door joy of open an egg. Inside is an egg man. And the egg man looks. Oh, man. Eastery. That would have been great that would be magical I've, I've got two easter memories two easter memories for you one relates to a previous topic of this podcast which is goosebumps we had uh chad on here the, chad quant from the goosebuds podcast uh when i got the how i learned to fly goosebumps story 1997 a plus one of the best goosebumps go read it and second one is speaking of my cousins as we were earlier grandfather thought okay we're gonna Put the Easter baskets out of reach of like the, the really small cousins who are crawling around. Don't want them. So he puts a, puts the Easter baskets on the ceiling fan. And you know what happens next? Somebody comes in and says, hey, it's really dark in here. Flips the switch. Guess what? Fans on. Easter candy everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's raining candy. It's like cloudy with a chance of candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the movie. I was sitting here and I went, oh, yeah. Well, wait. Grant, do you have any beloved Easter memories before I, I tell a story about how I got screwed over once on Easter? <laughs> I th that would be my new favorite Easter memory is hearing your story. Oh, OK, right. I, I, yeah. OK, so so when I when I was a child, when I was very when I was a small child, not a big child, uh, our our extended family, of course, would have an Easter egg hunt at whatever house. Uh, and there was this thing called the golden egg. And the, the golden egg was a special, well, it was an egg painted gold. If you found it, oh, you'd get money. So all the older kids, you know, they'd want it because they, they would get like 10, 15, 20 bucks. And, and back in the early 90s, that was a lot of money. You could like buy a house with that or something. So the older kids, the older cousins who were teenagers or thereabouts, you know, they'd find it. They'd demolish it. Uh, one year, hey, I'm a kid looking for those eggs. I found an egg. It was a blue egg, but it said the golden egg on it. And I got really confused. The go the word golden egg was in gold. But I'm like, oh, OK, it says it's the golden egg. It must be the golden egg. I take it back and they go, no, 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 no. Because then another one of, one of my other cousins shows up and they found something that said the real golden egg. And uh, <laughs> I got pretty pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why, why would you do this? I think I threw a fit. But they only have one stamp. <laughs> they like... used glitter uh, or something to like write the word on it. So it was sort of fancy. Oh, they're like hand drawing. Yeah, so a lot of labor into these eggs. Right. And, and so eventually, like all of the teens were kicked out because they were too old to go egg hunting. And I think the next year I found it because I, I threw such a fit. that They never did the fake egg again. <laughs> and, and when I found the real egg. I, I remember them giving me like five bucks and I was like, hey, uh, I, I know last year it was like 15 and they were like, no, or I think they told me they, they gaslit me and we're like, yeah, actually, no, last year it was like three dollars. So you get two extra dollars or something. And I'm like, no, I, I don't think that's right. I think you're lying to me. First, you screwed me over with this fake golden egg. Now you're giving me less money than, you know, we're dealing with inflation here and you're trying to cut my wages. <laughs> Then then they gave up on the money thing entirely and made a fake golden egg, like one that you can't eat, and would force whoever found it to write essays on how much we loved our family, which, of course, made the entire incentive of wanting to fi find it uh, disappear. And I just go get candy. Well, you find it. No, you find it. All right. Oh, but one year I did get Pack Attack on the Game Gear for Easter. That was from, from my mother, not from the extended family. <laughs> Messing with eggs. Ah, right. Actually, no, I think what it was is I got 10 bucks and they tried to tell me it was $7 last year, but I know it was like 20 or 25. So rude. So mean. I just want, just wanted an egg. 
I wanted to egg in some money. Hack Attack on the Game Gear, is that a is that a Greg Martin cover? I don't know, actually. <laughs> Might be. Um yeah, eggs. Who likes eggs? <laughs> Speaking of eggs, uh, did you guys cover the uh, IHOP Sonic oh, no, we have menu it. items? We have not. Thank you, Keith. Th- that also broke right after we stopped recording last week. But the menu items, there are six of them. I know there's six of them, mm-hmm. not because there's three in a top row and three in a bottom row, but because each item also is assigned a Chaos Emerald, meaning that no matter how much you eat, at IHOP, you can never go super. Oh. If the promotion is successful and they do it again next year, they'll get the seventh one in there. Yeah. Which emerald do you think they're missing, David? Oh. Have you looked at this? Uh, I, I, I didn't notice the emerald colors. I, I saw, I did look at the, I saw the menu image, but it didn't register any of the colors. So I'm going to say, are they missing the red one? Got to be gray. Nope. Is it is it a gray nope. slash white? No. Um, gray gray is there. Red is there. They gotta have a green one, right? Green one's there, and the blue one has to be there, right? Blue one's there. Okay, let's see what. It... <laughs> they do vary sometimes. Uh, red, blue. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Which one could it be? I, I give up. You give up, yeah, David. Well, otherwise, I'm just gonna say all the colors. Okay, That's so, fine. so blues there, uh-huh. greens there, yep. reds there, right? Whites there. Wait, white, silver, right? White silver, yeah. Um, sure. okay. Purple? Yep, purple's there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? I mean, sometimes it's a light blue and a dark blue. Bingo, baby! Ah. The most redundant one is the other blue. Okay. Uh, the light blue is missing. The light blue is missing. Yeah. All right. So maybe they can, you know, they'll bring in Classic Sonic for, you know, Classic Sonic's mm-hmm. Chili Dog. They still don't sell a Chili Dog. They're, it's all, uh, so Tails is two by two by two. What's an IHOP? They sell chili dogs. They sell everything. It's an IHOP. An IHOP? They don't have chili. I don't think they have chili dogs at IHOP. You know what? I'm thinking I'm thinking of Denny's. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> IHOP, I guess they, they do kind of stick with the breakfast. They have a couple like dinner entree things, that, but it's mostly, look, you come here for pancakes. Yeah. I've eaten a lot of IHOP over the years. Me too. It was an IHOP not that far from, from the house. It was open 24 hours. It was right. It was on Woodward. It was next to some giant church for some reason. And so I guess... Every Sunday, all, everyone would flood out of the church and go to the IHOP. So I wouldn't be at the IHOP because it's too full. Although I would like to go to the OHOP, which was down the road, which it wasn't actually called OHOP. It was the original Pancake House, but we all called it the OHOP ah. because it was the IHOP. <laughs> and the OHOP <laughs> had some really great right. pancakes. And IHOP, you know, has IHOP pancakes. I like pancakes. I like pancakes. I love diners. I love diners. I love diners. Love all night diners. Yeah, yeah. The um, pandemic and other economic factors have closed down some of my other previous favorite all night diners in LA. There's still some good ones, uh, but it's such a, like a fun vibe. Is it just the checkerboard floor here? Like, hey, this is like Green Hill Zone, but <laughs> and they're always playing cash cash. Is the amazing thing? <laughs> they're never not playing cash cash. I get the feeling that, like, if we were adults in the 90s going to the diner, that we'd probably all be sitting around it would be smoking swingers. a lot of cigarettes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant. We'd all be swinging with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant it would be like the movie Swingers. Oh, uh, well, oh, like the movie. Uh, right. But also, there, yeah. there is a part of me that is nostalgic <laughs> about people smoking in restaurants, even though, like, it's it a bad, bad. Yeah. it's bad like you don't coffee really and want cigarettes coffee cigarettes right i mean when i when i did come of age is that is that how that you describe it like you could still smoke in restaurants and yeah bars and stuff but now now no they got rid of it all by my first job was my know. parents owned a diner in uh it's still there the uh oh. sylvania diner in ohio Shout out to Whoa. that. <laughs> Sylvania Castle, Sonic 4. Sylvania Castle, that's right. It all connects. We're still talking about Sonic, technically. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there was a smoking section. Smoking and non- non-smoking section, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. There's no... What a, what a joke. A non-smoking section <laughs> in a place right. with a, which has a smoking section. The whole place is covered in smoke. What are you talking about? Oh, you just got a, a non-smoking section because you're like a foot... To the left, yeah, 
Well, I mean, that, that is not how air works. It doesn't circulate. It's only one spot. This is a very original observation about people smoking on yeah, airplanes. Let's, let's go back to guessing the colors again. That was good radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Sonic 06. Okay, we're going to talk about backlogs. We're going to talk about Sonic 06. Because Keith has been playing Sonic 06. We were a very Sonic 06 uh, welcoming mm-hmm. show that we started with that episode. Keith... Uh, when we were DMing, you mentioned that DMing is uh, means direct messaging. So we were text chatting. Why? Why do we? David and I both do this. Why do we both st- just <laughs> <laughs> smoothies? Keep it all in. They the the public needs to know. They need to know. Uh, okay, but, but we the show has been a sham. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking, and you have been playing Sonic 06 again. I have. Uh, tell us about that. Well, I, I just wrapped up uh, playing a whole bunch of Metroid Dread, and I managed to beat Metroid Dread on Dread mode, which is the mode where, like, if you get hit once, you die. And I was feeling pretty accomplished, but the issue with that is that Metroid Dread is such a, a finely polished game, and uh, it's so perfectly crafted that you, you can't really feel that set much of a sense of victory for besting it and so i was like i need to follow this up with just a not polished game like it's it's something i can feel earth. like a real <laughs> achievement over conquering and so i i played through sonic 2006 back in uh, according to my last achievements 2009 oh, and wow. haven't like picked it up since uh and so like i don't remember the game very well and haven't really had an urge to go back to it uh but recently i i I was like i'm gonna sit down and i'm going to get all of the achievements in this game and uh that's what i've been up to as of recently uh and i just beat sonic's story again getting started on silver's story and that's what i've been up to and it's uh it's it's a heck of an experience how many times did you die in that first silver fight Oh, so many times uh, <laughs> until I realized like the trick is to like avoid him a- until he starts lifting something up. He says like a line. He says, How you about know, this? He's, he's lifting. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you can go in for an attack, but you have to run away. You can't jump and hop away because he'll catch you in the air. But don't you secretly kind of wish that Silver could pick you up in the air? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> don't we all? There's entire sections of deviant art of that. <laughs> oh, that's true. So yeah, I I don't know like w- what I can say about Sonic 06 that hasn't been said like a million times over, but it it's it's a weird game. You could say it's, it's good. Strange. That doesn't happen. Often. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I could, yeah. in theory, say that. <laughs> yeah, like five stars. That's never been said. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, right, because I feel like even the people who who absolutely love 06 will admit that there are flaws. You never get somebody saying this is a perfect game. Like it's it's meticulously crafted. It has a ten out of ten story. Yeah, nobody's ever said flaws, but not deal breakers. I feel like if I if <laughs> if if uh, my darling wife Ashlyn gets caffeinated enough, mm-hmm. she'll say all of that about Sonic 06. Oh, this is the best game. <laughs> Everyone else is wrong. This is the only Sonic game that's fun. It's the only Sonic game that has this or that element to it. It's the only game with playable silver, only game with a, kin- a princess who kisses you. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, technically, you play you play silver in the Rivals games, right? Yeah, um, Team Sonic Racing. I played 06 not long ago, two years ago, I think, and found that the biggest flaw that I knew about going into it, aside from it being unfinished, and it is clearly unfinished, one of the ways that it is mm-hmm. shown as unfinished are the obnoxious loading times but they were not bumming me out the loading times. They were making me laugh because they are absurdly placed. Like they would be like a loading screen in any just, you know, and then uh, it's also an opportunity to just check your phone and just be like, you know, geez, geez, we both need a break from each other. Sonic 06. Just take, take a beat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's, let's do this town mission. All right. We got the music. Oh, this is the ska town mission three music. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. That's the big difference. Is back in 2006, not everyone had a phone that just had the internet on it. Exactly. So those loading screens were not as not as luxurious as they are now. Exactly. People it were was... getting pissed off at it. Yeah, you're not like to break open a novel. It was ahead of its time. It was just teaching you patience. Yeah. I, I had a little flip phone thing, which I guess technically could connect to the internet, but 
it's taking up you know you gotta pay like it'll rack up money no i don't remember how phones used to work <laughs> texts were a dime until they weren't and then you could sort of use the internet oh six i to me what's good about it is like the irrepressible energy of sonic man and lovey man and yes. the challenge of love <laughs> yeah yeah as i've mentioned several times on the show sonic ripping out elisa's arm Ooh. as he's like dragging her across the field telling her to smile <laughs> yeah well like <laughs> what other game has that <laughs> yes it's exactly it's it it is it, it you know it's a big expensive giant corporation piece of mass media but it does sort of feel like outsider art in some ways because it is just it's just the <laughs> You talk to the guy, he says, I've found a new way of combining lucky and happy. It's Luppy. And then he says uh-huh. it again, I've found a new way of combining Luppy and Luppy. It's Luppy. <laughs> who wrote I know that? Who, it's I want to I want to know who came up with man. that. It's it's like I want to get that person on the show. There's so many good questions. Was that in the script? The script leaked, right? We've talked about that. Uh, right. Well, the script that leaked, it was just the main script, not any of the uh, mm. NPC dialogue. So, God, you know, like there's been so much said about 06 and I feel like occasionally people go on record about it. But there's so many people who are involved in that game. You would think there'd be some really great, terrible stories. And by terribly, I'm terrible. I mean, terribly great, like about the making of it, about the rushing of it, like what was decided, what was what needed to be there. There's so much about this game that we don't know anything about. Not kind of leaving. No, I yeah, just. You could probably talk about Naka leaving. That that seems like it's three chapters of a book right there. Like what? Where? What happened? Oh, I yeah, we gotta pitch that to somebody. You know, we've heard about Sonic Heroes almost killing Azuka, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how many people working on O six experienced that? Do you think? <laughs> yeah, we because O six is also in a weird place. Like, the Sonic Team is still split in half at that point. You have Sonic Team in Japan, Sonic Team USA, which be which was Sonic Studio no, or Sega Studios at that point. They're getting ready to make the second Nights for for better or worse. Is this Air Nights or the other Nights? Uh the Journey of Dreams, oh, the ones that came out. Journey of right. Dreams, okay. Right, cuz you had Air Nights is like your guest era. Right. Yeah, so you got Shadow in 05, Journey of Dreams in 07, and in between 06 is Sonic 06. So that's being made by some other team because Naka wasn't hanging out in America. He probably he was he was done with it. Remember he lived in America. He flew back to Japan because he wanted to find himself a wife who wasn't American. Clearly, that's what <laughs> he said in an interview that hasn't been publicly posted anywhere. Well, it was in a Japanese magazine. It's real. I'm not making anything else up. So he's probably done. He's done with living in America. Like, what was the breaking point for him? Because also we know Sonic Team was working on Phantom. What was it Phantom Saga? Fifth Phantom Fan- Saga. Yeah. Fifth Phantom Saga. It's like, I know there's a five in there. Like, how did that start up? How did that die? Where did Sonic 06 fit in all this? You know, people say, oh, the silver gameplay was taken from Fanta- Fifth Phantom Saga. But like, does that fully align? Because I feel like both games did exist at the same time at one point. So like, what? And then what What made Naka go, I'm done, but then still somehow convinced Sega to fund Pro? Because I think Sega was one of the primary funders of this spinoff. So, so clearly... Whatever he did, he was like, screw you, I'm not making Sonic, but pay me to make other games not under Sega. And they went, sure, here's some money. Like, I, what is the story? What is there? Elise. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Fifth Phantom Saga story. Yeah. That, that's a shoe that has not yet dropped. No, I, I want to know what was going on, because it seems like it was a lot of nonsense all wrapped up. But, and that's what gave us this game. To me, it feels like they're also like trying to cycle through different technologies. So, like the the big marketing for 06 was like, no, this is the one that's got the havoc physics. Like you never physicked in a in a game like this, <laughs> right? And then they like the the video has like the homing attack, and you're like, oh boy, it looks like gravity accelerated there or something. I don't know. And then Fifth Phantom Saga was like a showpiece for like an Nvidia graphics chip of the era, or like a chip that nvidia ultimately bought so it's like i don't know, like a bunch a bunch of technical experiments that sort of fit together into a game yeah i mean that is kind of sega's motto sometimes <laughs> yeah i pulled up wikipedia because i wanted to see if that had to say anything about naka and it and it just said 
Naka said he resigned because he didn't want to continue making Sonic games and instead wished to focus on original properties, which I feel like I've read that before. But it always it seems a little off to me because I know there were a lot of Sonic games between Adventure and 06. And Naka was involved as a producer to some degree or an executive or whatever. But he was working on other things. He was working on PSO. They mentioned Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Like, that came out. It, it seemed like Naka did have his fingers in other pies. And it just seemed like to leave in the middle of a game instead of saying, I'm going to stick this through and then leave seems odd. But also... They include this quote that says, with his departure, quote, the heart and soul of Sonic, end quote, was gone, according to former Sega of America CEO Tom Kalinske. That's interesting. But Tom Kalinske also had been away from the oh, company for a, for, a, <laughs> for a long time. At that, like, what do you talk like? OK, I mean, that's that's great, Tom, but you weren't there. You weren't there for the Dreamcast. You you weren't there for. Uh, they hadn't settled on Naka is the father of mm -hmm. Sonic until later in the nineties. That like that's a ninety seven ninety eight era invention. Yeah, I mean they they definitely. I think he was also easy to roll out over here because he <laughs> he lived. Well, I, I feel like Yasuhara wasn't necessarily someone who needed a ton of spotlight on him, and Naka was definitely the person who type of person who wanted attention. So when you start with the original like those early interviews oh hey here's naka and he's living in san francisco because they're making sonic in america now and then he goes back and he becomes the head of sonic team and so like hey everyone look at me even though oshima created the character yasuhara designed all the levels and it's, um oh six <laughs> it's a good i don't know I've I've become far more gentle, gentler on it over the years. That's all I know. And I mean, I still I, I'm sure I've said this a hundred times. I feel like I said it in the first episode. Yeah. Oh, six. You know, it's not as bad as I used to think it was. Yeah, it's 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 not as painful playing it now as it was when I first played it. You know, all the mm -hmm. you know, all the anxieties about like what this is doing to my favorite video game series it's like <laughs> it's all in the past it's, it's just this weird chapter in sonic the hedgehog and, and i've i've been having a lot of fun playing it it's a very weird strange game mm -hmm. like i i was reading up and like uh, uh, leading up to the game they were talking about how it was like a, a reboot of or a reimagining or it would like set the precedent for what sonic is in the future and for some reason, it's like in Venice. <laughs> they they <laughs> decided that is the the setting that will define Sonic and yeah, medieval castle in Venice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense to me. It's cool though, looking back to the, it though, because like every other game is like kind of doing the same locations: Green Hill, Chemical Plant. You know, sort of since then. Uh, or, you know, but it, it, so it's, it's very, it was odd at the time. It still sticks out as weird. David, I like what you were saying earlier too, about like, I think really what I would love more than anything is, yeah, just the oral history from people who worked on this. Cause I'm sure there was somebody who was like, yes, this is a, there, the game is called Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh sure. Sonic the Hedgehog. I know the series, but they would never release another game called Sonic the Hedgehog. They've already released a game called Sonic the Hedgehog. The first game that would be crazy. They, that would be a huge swing to call your game Sonic the Hedgehog. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on the game and I'm taking on a lot of responsibility. I'm working all the time. I'm killing myself, but it's worth it because it's Sonic the Hedgehog. People are going to love it. That's what I want. I want the true oral history. It's got to it's got to be it's got to be somebody who's willing to spill that tea, right? And I think that they maybe maybe we need to do it because they need to talk to somebody who like like you said Keith, it's fun. It is a fun game. It's not good. No, nobody would accuse it of being good it's not finished it's obviously unfinished it is like you know it's frayed at the edges but it is uh 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 it's got some weird ideas and that alone is worth the and then and then it kind of it kind of plays like sonic adventure and it's taken everything from sonic adventure but it like has expanded it it's times it by three including the amount of bugs <laughs> and the ability to like fall through the floor and walls and stuff like you get all of it tripled. Right. Oh, that's what was missing from the game. Bug. The character Our bug. Character faster than Star Sonic. Bug and Bug 2. Canonically faster. Right. They could have had a mini game. Yeah. Bug races Sonic. Have Sonic race Bug. It's synergy. It's 
Sega G. Is that a word? <laughs> Sega G? They've probably kicked that around. Yeah, it's definitely a word. Right. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. Workshop it. Some internal presentation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I've probably mentioned before, the thing that O6 has going for it, the other games don't have going for it, is uh, Zebrahead. Yes. And I know I'm known for only knowing Cash Cash, but the other <laughs> band I only know is, <laughs> is Zebrahead. Yeah. I saw Zebrahead at my very first concert. They were second on the bill. Wow. And they were great. And they have been consistently great since then. Good job, Zebrahead. <laughs> That's awesome. The whole soundtrack is amazing. Uh, his, his World is a great lead single. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shadow has a great theme song. Silver has a great theme song. All of the stage music is really fun. I really like all of it. Uh, but Radical Train is really fun. And Aquatic Bass. Obviously, Soliana New City um there's just a lot of uh, radical train with the sound of the train sound effect is like, yeah uh, just kind of works yeah the soundtrack is amazing like how did how did that turn out like that were were the it's the first otani were they not crunching the music <laughs> like when did they make the music in the production of well the game? we we've established that otani just had 46 new songs to give out in dlc3 for frontier so <laughs> That guy, yeah, he's like no problem. I got this, <laughs> right? He... Otani is prolific. <laughs> yes, let's get Otani on the show. Maybe, yeah, he I could know. tell us what happened. You know, ignoring the fact that he's still uh... intimately involved with the series. Uh, <laughs> uh, who? Okay, wait. Who involved would be willing to? Uh, you know what? He's burned so many bridges. I bet Yuji Naka would tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, what about? Uh, yeah, I'm curious about like kind of like Bo was saying earlier too, with the maybe the localizers or the game writers. Yeah, well, yeah. Where did Luppy Luppy come from? And Sonic Man. It's a funny way to go with poking fun at the fans mm-hmm. because I think the usual way to poke fun at the fans is like Super Paper Mario. It'll be like, you know, a lizard with glasses and like a shirt that doesn't fit. And Sonic Man is insane. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very fit. I bet Sonic Fan tried to win that Sonic Jam Museum curator contest, <laughs> lost, and was so distraught over his loss. He's like, I'm just going to become Sonic. Yeah. That that's part of my headcanon now. He would be on that MTV show where it was like I forget what it was called, but it basically it would be people who would get plastic surgery to try to look like you know Christina Aguilera or something. Like I'm a big Christina Aguilera fan, so uh, got a bunch of surgery and now I look like Christina Aguilera. It was True Life, maybe. Uh, was that Teen Mom? Not Teen. Oh Mom. no! All right. <laughs> True Life sounds about right. Like I am a dot dot dot. There, there's yeah, something, something. Anyway, um, welcome to the show. We have a <laughs> lot to get into this week. That's right. Yeah. We've, we've got a guest. We have a guest. Keith John's. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Keith. Great to be here. All right. Hey, Keith, do you have any, like, anything you really want to say before this ends? Like, something that was really on your mind about Sonic or a topic about Sonic or a topic about life? Did you want to tell us about? anything oh uh, oh goodness uh uh what uh, uh, in my quest to get all of the achievements for sonic 2006 right i came to the realization that achievements used to be a lot harder to get <laughs> in general <laughs> yeah than they are nowadays at okay. some point i'm not sure when like which which one do you think is most out of reach for you right now i mean i guess what uh, there's one that's basically like when you get all the everything, all the gold medals for S ranking everything. Yeah, I guess that would be like yeah the final, you know, most difficult out of reach thing. That's an absurd requirement. They 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 really make you ace this game. They really make you, <laughs> you they force you to be a pro to beat this game. But like nowadays in like Sonic Origins, you don't even need to beat all the missions to get all the achievements in that game no uh, any 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 modern like the, i played the the most recent ratchet and clank and like in that game like there's a whole second like new game plus thing and there's no achievements related to that you don't need to do any of that to get all the achievements <laughs> uh i guess i guess the the other thing on my mind is uh 2006 was also the year that bomberman act zero came out 
Wow. Yeah. There. And I feel <laughs> like people have, have forgotten about that for some reason. And I, I think people should be reminded. Yeah. About Bomberman Act Zero. Yeah. Bomberman yeah. Act Zero was. It was a, a heck of a year heck, for yeah long running video game franchise. I, I feel like there were some comparisons at the time between 06 and Act Zero. Like, hey, beloved franchises rebooting grittier and realer did you play act zero no no but oh. now i'm i'm very tempted to get it just because i'm on this roll with the yeah infamous you... xbox i have the 360 setup right. nice. that's I, another I love... game that hasn't been right it's not backwards compatible on anything so right. yeah i'd i'd like to know just how it how it functions how it controls i know the art direction is completely out the window compared to what normal Bomberman is but how different does it play from what i've read uh i haven't played it from what i've read it plays just like every other bomberman game <laughs> but uh there is no there is no saving in the game oh, you wow. can't save your progress that's... so you need to go from start to finish wow. in one go that's wild yeah in the in the year of our lord 2006 you couldn't save <laughs> there's a hard drive <laughs> I remember this also being fodder for the console wars of that era because the Nintendo Wii was not 2006, but 2007. I think, I think. we established on a previous episode it was 06. Yeah, it was 06. Tail end of 06. Okay, because the Wii brings me back into gaming and aware of both Sonic 06 and uh, Bomberman X Zero and, and associating that with being like Xbox games of like, this is... This is what the gamers have done. They've taken their halos and they've halo Bomberman and they've haloed Sonic. Whereas Sonic and the Secret Rings is great. Showed up for that one day one. It's not great. Um, <laughs> we've had a previous episode defending it. It has its merits. Uh, so does Sonic 06. I'll throw in my merit for Secret Rings is it's a really great uh, party game collection. Yeah. Mini games. They're actually good, fun. We. You're totally right. Mini games. Not that there's. A shortage of mini game collections on the Wii, but it's a good one of those. Yeah, you, you know, you bring up, you know, a Secret 06 to Secret Rings. We talk about like uh, Bomberman X Zero. What's the next game that comes out? Why it's Bomberman Land on the Wii. That is a return to form, right? Like, so, you know, both franchises kind of echoing strange things happening on the HD systems and the Wii coming in and giving you a more traditionally looking sort of thing. Like, yeah. We're having a good time. I've never played Bomberman Land. Maybe it sucks. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, <Yes. laughs> uh, well, 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 what else is there to be said? Lots, but we're out of time. We have to wrap it up. Oh, we it, 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 all of the mares have been said. Keith, please return. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, over to you, David. Oh, right. That's it. Yep. This train is coming to a screeching halt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and when you hear those brakes being applied in an extreme fashion, you know it's because we've reached yet the end of yet another episode of Sonic Weekly. Ah, uh, yeah, Sonic Weekly once again. Like it's been said, thank you, Keith John Stack, for joining us in this wonderful journey of a podcast. If you like what you heard or you're willing to give it another shot what you should do is of <laughs> course <laughs> subscribe using your favorite podcatcher of choice be it apple podcasts spotify or podcast addict for that open source free flow and feeling uh if you don't want to use any sort of podcatcher though we do have these episodes also over on youtube at sonic dash weekly is the username which uh, includes gameplay footage from jack of old games who has been on this show more than once and may return one day i don't know after he hears this he might say thanks but no Wait, what, what, what's so bad about <laughs> what, what? We, we're just at time it's not that you did anything we necessarily to... it's just we're just at time bo's gotta go unless bo's done bo you gotta to... go right i gotta i gotta go he's gotta go i you know. gotta go so we, we gotta just get you know yeah 
hey, if you want to get a hold of the show and say, David, you're being way too hard on everyone, email us at sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. You can say, David, calm down. Look, you're, 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 it's a good time. You're all having a good time. Bo needs to go. And I'll be like, okay, yeah. And then you can also say, send me a link to that Discord server. That's right. It's the only way to get into our server. Ask for the link and you can talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans about Sonic and other things. It's like the other things we love to talk about on this show. <laughs> hey, we technically got a Twitter. It's at Sonic Weekly. Follow it, maybe. Um, oh, I was going to look up to see if anybody left any comments. Uh, I forgot to do that. Um, instead, I'm going to say, hey, smoothies. Thank you for the edit. That's what makes the show listenable to you, the viewer at home. And of course, thank you, Bo, for being a family man. And thank you, Grant, for putting up with my nonsense at the end of every episode. (laughs) Thank you, David. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, listener. Thank you, Ho. Naka? Naka. Thank you, Naka. Right. What is Naka doing? Not speaking on advice of counsel. Oh, 